Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to make a standalone, patient-facing, smart on fire app using the Plasma Fire framework. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to connect it to an Epic system, and I'm going to connect it to my actual Epic Health system and run the app on my actual medical data. So to get started, what we want to do is open a terminal, and we're going to run npx create plasma app and provide a folder where we want to install our app. So I'll call it my app. And now it's going to walk us through a wizard asking us what kind of app we want to create. So this will be a patient facing app. So we're going to select patients and then it asks if we want to start with a template or with a blank app. So we're going to select a template and we'll wait just a few minutes for all the packages to install. Okay, the packages have installed and just a note on this high severity vulnerabilities that has to do with the create react script. It's not a big deal. Um, so you can just ignore that. Uh, okay, so we're going to cd into the directory, so I'm going to cd into my app, and then I'm going to open the app with VS Code. Alright, in this video I'm not going to talk too much about the file structure of the app, it's just a basic React app, but I do want to point out one thing, which is if you go into source and into config, you need to rename the config.example.ts to just be config.ts. And here is where you'll store API keys for whatever uh, you want to connect to. It comes by default with some a setup for connecting to the Smart on Fire sandbox. But if you wanted to connect with Epic, you could put your API keys here or Cerner as well. And in the README, there are some instructions for how to run it. I recommend that you run it using HTTPS. And uh, here's how you can do it on a Mac, which is what I'm using. So I'm going to copy this and I'll just open a terminal here and I'll run the app uh, just to make sure that the default app is working properly and then we'll add something to the app. Okay, so when I launch it, you can see that it gives me this landing page. I'll click launch the Smart on Fire sandbox. And what that's going to do is it's going to show me the patient's name, his address, and the vitals were loaded. If you open up the console, you can look and see the vitals. And if you wanted to display those, you could. I'll make a quick note that you can change the patient. In this case, uh, this is not a realistic case, but the patient is actually specified in the config here. And uh, Smart on Fire has a, uh, has a patient browser. So if I can find it. Okay, Smart on Fire has a patient browser. So if you wanted to change the patient, you could come to this page here and uh, you can search various patients. So let's just pick one to use as an example. Uh, we'll pick the first one. And you can see what kind of data is on each patient, which is useful for doing your testing. And what we want to do is just copy this patient's ID, paste that into our config. And then we'll just reload the app So we'll go back to the home page, launch it, and now you can see that we've connected to a different patient. Okay, so now let's make the app do something different just to demonstrate how the uh, Plasma Fire framework can be used. So uh, we've already loaded the vitals. Why don't we load the immunizations for this patient and display those on the screen? So I'm going to come into the uh, app.tsx. This tells us basically how the pages are routed and I have a test screen to start off with, so we can go into the test screen. And this is the screen that we're actually seeing right here. So the first thing we can do is to load the immunizations. And to use that, we can use the Fire Client Helper, which is part of the Plasma Fire framework. And we have an API called Get Immunizations. This gives you a list of immunizations that are already typed uh, and you can see I'm using GitHub Copilot, so it recommends how I should write the code. So when I call this, it's going to give me an array of immunization objects, which are based on Fire R4. And what we'll want to do is let's save those to our state. So let's make a state variable called immunizations and set immunizations. Okay, 
And then once we have loaded the immunizations, we will set them to the state variable. Okay, and actually we can go ahead and log them to the console and make sure that that's working. So let's check it. Here are our immunizations. So we have 13 immunizations for this patient. Okay, now that we've loaded the immunizations, let's go ahead and display them on the screen. The Plasma Fire framework comes with a set of components that bind directly to Fire R4 resource objects, so we can actually use one of those components to display our immunizations. So we want to do what we want to do is take our immunizations. We want to map each immunization to a Fire R4 dot immunization view, which is a component that takes an immunization as a property. And there we have our immunizations. Now the components in the Plasma Fire framework don't come with any styling on them. So it's up to you to, st to style them however you need for your application. Uh, if you use the Create Plasma app uh, tool, then you'll get Tailwind CSS already installed in your app. And so the way that you would style them is you would just use the Explorer here. Um, we don't have any documentation at the moment, but you'd look at the class names for each of these elements and then you go into your CSS file and you edit the classes to give the stylings however you want. So if we look at a high level, the immunization class name is called immunization view underscore container. And I'm going to just add some basic styling just to demonstrate how you might want to go about doing this. So I'm going to copy this class name and then back in our code, we can open the app.scss file and let's add some styling for this class. And if you want to use Tailwind CSS, you can actually apply some of those styles by using the at apply keyword. And I'm not that familiar with CSS, so I'm going to just look up Tailwind CSS card, and I'm gonna copy some styles to make it look like a, a nice card. So let's just copy this one here. Save it and return to our app. And now I have a a card with some shadows here and maybe we can actually add some padding so let's add some padding here and maybe a margin on the bottom to give it a little bit of space okay so now they're a little bit uh, less cramped and then uh, if we want to style some of the actual text within it, those also have class names. So again, we'll just explore here and we can figure out what this one is. This is the vaccine code class. So we can add that in here. And if we wanted, we could do at apply, I think it's font bold and text large. So we make it a little bit bigger and bold. And there we have it. And then if we wanted to style, let's say these other ones, we just need to find the class that it's using and just add whatever we want. So um, I think if we wanna make them italic, it'd be font style italic. Okay, and we could do the same thing for the date if we wanted. So let's grab that. Okay, perfect. So just to demonstrate how you can style these components uh, using CSS and Tailwind CSS, uh, if you choose to. Okay, the next thing I noticed is that these immunizations are not in chronological order. So we can pretty easily sort them by just updating our code after we've loaded it. So back in the test screen, when we load it, we want to, before we set the value, we, we should sort it. So we could say value equals value dot sort, and uh, that should take a function with two values here. And what we want to do is return, uh, I think it's a current state time, I believe, but if you ever forget the properties or you want to look them up, you can just check the types on these objects here. Uh, or you can look at the fire uh, fire uh, documentation. And unfortunately, a current state time is actually a string, so we need to convert that to a 
date, but it can also be undefined. So I think we'll say if not a dot occurrence date time turn negative one. So we're just doing some undefined checks here, and then we'll have to convert it to a date. So we'll say new date, and then convert to a number so we can compare it. Okay, I, I think that's how you can sort them. Let's check and see if it's working. Okay, uh, I believe that they're sorted uh, properly. Uh, if you wanted to do reverse order, then you can just switch this around. But now they're in uh, order of earliest to most recent immunizations. Okay, so our app doesn't do a whole lot right now. It just shows a list of the patient's immunizations, but that's just for demonstration purposes. Maybe in a future video, we'll add on top of this app. Maybe we could look up an immunization schedule and integrate that into our app and show an alert when the patient is due for an immunization. But the next and final thing I want to show you is how to integrate this app with Epic. And to do that, I'm going to use my actual Epic data. So the first thing I want to show you is another component that you can use. I'm going to take out this here because I don't want my personal information showing up in the video. So I'm going to delete the patient header and instead we'll use the fire r4.human name view component, which is just a component that formats a name and, uh, and, and displays it. So it takes a human name property and the patient has a property called name, which is actually an array on the patient. And I think we're gonna have some TypeScript errors here because it can possibly be null. So let's just check if patient data and patient data dot name are defined, then we'll show that. Otherwise we'll just pass in undefined. Okay, so now we're seeing the patient's name, but we're not seeing her address or birthday or anything like that. That could be personal. Okay, in order to connect to Epic, uh, I cut the video, but what I did is I went into the config and I added my the API key for my test app that has been already registered with Epic. Um, and I also added the endpoint for my health system. So what you want to do is you can do a Google search for Epic Fire endpoints, and they maintain a list of the endpoints for all of their customer health systems. So I looked up the health system that I personally use, which is SSM. And you want to be careful if to check if you're using DSTU2 or R4. I'm looking for R4 because that's what most of the Plasma framework is built on top of, and it's not always compatible with DSTU2. So I'm gonna to go to the next one, and here's the R4 endpoint. And what you'll do is you'll take that endpoint and you'll create you'll add it as the ISS parameter in your config object. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is we want to add a new button on our landing page that allows us to launch Epic and connect to Epic. So we're going to open up the landing screen here and we're going to copy and paste this button and just change it to connect to Epic. Let's add a new line as well. Okay, so we'll delete this patient name here and we'll call the button launch Epic with SSM. And what we wanna do is we wanna pass in the parameters for our Epic API keys. So let's load those, I've already loaded them uh, from the config. I'll just show you how to do it. So I'm going to name it auth params epic and I'm just grabbing it from my config. In this case it's called epic patient r4. And I'll copy that and I want to pass that in. I'm I want to go to the launch screen and pass my epic auth parameters there. Okay, so I'll save that. And now I click epic and it's going to actually redirect to my health systems patient portal, MyChart, and I'm going to use my MyChart credentials to authenticate myself in order to use the app that we've created. So I'll sign in to my MyChart, and you're gonna go through a few pages. This page here is telling me that I haven't submitted my app yet. That's because it's a, a testing app that I just use. Um, so it, normally you won't see this warning when your app is uh, fully in production. I, same, same thing here. And then this next page tells you all the resources that your app has access to. And since this is a testing app, I've given it access to a lot of resources. So I'm going to allow the app to access all of those. 
And here we have my name and all of my immunizations. And what's really cool is I've just gotten a notification on my phone. I have my chart installed and an email uh, basically telling me that a new app has been linked to my MyChart account. So that's uh, a cool security feature. And here are my immunizations. Okay, hopefully this video was useful to you. Uh, please feel free to use the Create Plasma App CLI tool to create your own Smart on Fire app. And if you have any questions or suggestions or comments, uh, just leave them in the comment section, please. Thanks for watching.